All right, the Reds, Thursday's Talking Reds, joined today by Paul Cope. And the big story that everyone's talking about, not everyone inside legal boundaries, it must be said, is uh, Roberto Firmino and Mason Holgate. Uh, after 47 days, the inquiry is over. Uh, Roberto Firmino has been exonerated of using any sort of racial language towards Mason Holgate. The incident's over. Um, and you know Roberto Firmino can continue to play for Liverpool for the rest of the season. No bans, no fines, no anything else. So, I mean, first of all, purely from a sporting level, that's good news for Liverpool that you know our top striker is not going to face any kind of ban. Yeah, of course. It, it's really weird this because I've not I've not really been thinking about it when we're having all these and we're causing murder lately. A few of us talking about. Um, the transfer window and stuff still, and I know loads of people don't like it, but one of the things I've not been thinking about is the possibility of, of this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And pe- everyone, I think lots of people seem to have just put it out their minds completely, that he could have just had a lengthy ban for this, and if that had have happened, it would have just completely wrecked the season. And it sort of factors more into the arguments we've been having lately about how sort of on a knife edge this whole thing is right now. So, yeah, from a, from a football perspective, it's, it's obviously a relief. I, I think there were may, maybe that whole putting it to the back of our minds was because none of us believed anything was ever going to happen really because I remember saying right from the start we, I was in the ground and you couldn't really you couldn't tell what was going on from the back of the main stand but when I came out and I heard what had gone on I, I was saying to people but whatever he shouted he shouted over the ref's shoulder mm. so if there was something clearly bad surely the ref would say well I, I heard him say it and that's it it's, it's done and dusted so I think it's probably a bit of a surprise it's, it's taken this long, but then, yeah. it, but then it's been a thorough process which is, which is right. Yeah, and, and when you look into sort of the process that he went through, I mean, I, I think some of the conversations that are happening now around, you know, sort of looking for a, a deeper, darker conspiracy theory around it on one side, or, or sort of suggestion, you know, some kind of malevolence on the, on the side of Holgate, I, I think, or, or something malicious. I think all of this really needs to stop. I think this is the end of a long process, as I say, 47 days it's taken. Um, and, and when you look into the details of what went on here, uh, Firmino himself spent several hours at Wembley given his version of events. There was multiple video footage from angles that were not broadcast shown to lip reading expert, experts. Uh, a linguistic expert was consulted. Uh, 12 players gave statements. Officials from both teams gave statements. The referee, Bobby Madley, John Moss, the fourth official. You know, every way you look at it, it looks like there has been a, a thorough investigation into this. Jagielka, Lalana, Lovren, Milner all gave statements. Uh, on Holgate as well, the FA have said there's no suggestion of this being an intentionally false or malicious um, claim from him. So all of this really, I mean, it, to me it does draw a line under it. And I, I, I tweeted as such last night that I, you know, I really think that should be that. That, you know, it's done, it's dusted, and yet lots of people want to carry it on. They want to make allegations towards a 21-year-old lad. They want to make allegations towards Firmino. They want to draw mad um, parallels to the Suarez case and suggest that there's something, this is something to do with that, which clearly it isn't. And, you know, I, I ended up getting into a debate on Twitter about it, which wasn't my intention. I just I was just trying to say, look... It's not like you. you. I know, but I, I, all I was trying to say was, look, you weren't there. You're not inside the player's mind. You don't know what Holgate thought he heard why have you got to cast aspersions basically based on who you support yeah. which is which is the bit that I've got a bit of an issue with I mean just because you support Liverpool I don't think you should go oh well he's wrong then equally if you support Everton why just still assume that there's some you know conspiracy that's what I'm seeing a lot of and then I get I got people saying to me well it's just an opinion well there's a difference here for me because it's not just an opinion you're basically casting aspersions about a young lad Colgate's 21 years old he needs to crack on with his life and you know if this continues into a bigger thing where people talk forever about you know making allegations calling them names and this that and the other I think that's unfair I think you know you, if the lad thought he heard something he had, he had every right yeah. to go to the referee and say I think he said X and, and, and if that happens in the future you know people should be allowed to do that again they shouldn't think hang on if I do that people are going to say this about me because you know that that's wrong I, I've still got a problem to be honest with people going through his tweets and, and digging out things from absolute years ago yeah. and saying you know he should be held to account for that apparently he will be the FA say they're still looking into that but the very fact that on the evening of the incident, someone spent the time going through every single tweet he'd ever posted and found something and went, oh, well, look at this. I find that all that a little bit 
Yeah, I, d- I bit didn't. Bitter. I didn't know about that until yeah. reading the articles this morning, and it was like, oh, there's a separate investigation into this now. I thought that's a that's a bit moody, that isn't it? That someone is in response to this has gone right. Well, I'll I'll dig some dirt on him then. That's maybe a sad reflection of the society we live in. On on the just an opinion thing, I've I've had this conversation with people on Twitter in the past where pe- I think I think loads of people out there think you can that you can just put just I, this is just my opinion and it's like off ground tick or something for for those who know what that is probably that's probably a reference lost on on people outside Liverpool. But you can't <laughs> if your opinion is defamatory, it's defamatory. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So you like as a, as a sort of serious point on this. You've got to be very careful what you say, and Twitter, Twitter's not off ground tick either, no. or Facebook. Like, if you say something def- defamatory against someone, they could take action against you. So, just be a little bit careful. And, and I think as well that the bit just t- taking up on the point you just said, I actually think I've been getting criticism lately for criticising the owners and the management and stuff to a certain degree. But this is this is a part where they deserve a lot of credit because this is a clear example of something we've learned from from past yeah. mistakes. The club has handled this impeccably I think and I think in fairness to the FA as well that statement they've released you can you can we were talking about it just before we started recording you can take it apart and we can question various things about it but ultimately what the FA is trying to do is say that Firmino didn't do what he was accused of doing whilst not putting off anybody else from making accusations like this in the future but and that's really important mm. so if you're if you're part of a posse that's having a go at Holgate now for, for saying he thought Firmino said this Think about what the sort of repercussions of that are in general life. If people feel like they can't come forward with, with allegations like this, then it suppresses things like we've seen in the in, in, in wider sort of society that's going on right now. So I just have a little think about that. Um, I mean, some it, people I, said that like they don't like the wording of the statement because it, it, it says there wasn't sufficient evidence to, to punish for me, you know. And, and some, some people are saying sort of that word and creates a little bit of a, an open and a bit of doubt as though like well, well there was some but there wasn't enough yeah uh, and yet again that just feels a little bit of a conspiracy theory for me because you know when you as i say if you read that what i just read out about all the video angles about the lip reading about what you said initially as well that he's literally over the, the referee's shoulder when he's saying what he's saying the idea that there's some hidden thing that, that there's some cover-up is ridiculous basically isn't it yeah i, th- I, I mean yeah, okay, you, you, you can say, well, they should have just said he's innocent, but they've said all of the other bits, which is, we've interviewed 12 players, none of them heard him say what was, what was alleged. The referee didn't hear what was alleged. But also, but on, on Holgate's side, for anyone who says he made it up, just go back and watch the footage and watch his reaction. And, and if, in that instance, on the pitch, in that emotion, he's made it up, then he sh- he's in the wrong profession. Like he, he should be going, he should be getting an Oscar. Do you know what I mean? I he should be going into the acting profession because he, like he's a decent footballer. But if the, Joe, if that's his, if that's his acting capabilities, well, this is the, this is the thing. There's you know suggestions, allegations, whatever you want to call it, uh, around that. You know, he's pushed for me, you know, into the crowd. And and by the way, there's people saying, well, what, why was there no action over that? He wasn't booked at the time. There was no retrospective action. I understand that point of view. Yeah. Um, there's something should have been done about that, but it wasn't. And lots of fouls happen, and lots of pushes happen, and fights happen, and all kinds of things happen on a football pitch. So, it, okay, that happens. But the idea that he's immediately then gone, okay, shit, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the wrong here. What can I do to get out of it? I know I'll allege racism. It doesn't really stack up. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a reach. And so, as I say, I mean, you look, you know, you feel free to ignore me. It's up to you. Um, and, and plenty of people ignore me all the time, <laughs> including Kelly, my mum and dad, uh, and everyone else. Are we talking about your dad today? Uh, no, my dad's sound today, mate. He's, uh, he's coming down as normal. Uh, he's going to pick the kids up from sound. school. I think uh, this should be like a regular update. Yeah, dad update on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have a look at, I bought some mud guards for my mountain bike. And, um, or, well, say hi- it's a hybrid, actually, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> um, he's going to fit the, those mug guards for me basically today because I'm absolutely shit at anything practical. So well in that, uh, if you do do that, and I know you won't be watching, so maybe we don't, <laughs> maybe we don't need these dad updates. Uh, it, just to move on then from that, I mean, as I say, you know, feel free to, to say what you what you want, but do it within legal boundaries. Really, uh, for me, that's drawn a line under the incident. I don't think the lad should be getting a load of abuse. I don't think I think Firmino's got what he wanted out of it, and that his name's being cleared, and it mustn't have been a good good thing to have and hang it over his head mm. but he's played very well in the meantime so hopefully he can play even better uh, but moving on from that uh, it's 27 years ago today 
since Kenny Dalglish resigned from Liverpool. Um, and the Anfield had produced a tour moment in time on this, a special about, about when he left what led up to it, how he was feeling. And it included interviews with Kelly Dalglish, Brian Reid, uh, various players and fans, including some people from the Amphora. Uh, it's gone down really well. Uh, people seem to really like it. Uh, and, and when we end this section, um, there'll be a little trailer before we come back with the papers. But um, what, what do you remember that one, Kobe? Are you old enough to remember this one? Yeah. When he, uh, when he packed in, where, where were you? It, it is one of them incidents, isn't it? Where, like, where were you when this happened? I don't remember where I was, but it, it, seeing I'm at that age now, I'm 30. I'm 38 this year, which people keep reminding me it makes me nearly 40. I'm 41, so yeah, I think you know, nothing happens. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> it's <laughs> just a number. Pe- people keep telling me I'll grow, I'll grow up eventually. No, I'm it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, but it's, it, I'm at that age now where, where numbers like this get thrown out all the time. Like the other week, someone went to me, Men in Black was made 20 years ago, and I was like, no chance. 27 years ago, that makes me feel old. Do you know what I mean? Um, I was in. I remember. I was in school. Uh, I was in school. I had a business studies teacher called Mr. Burrows. He was a massive blue nose, and he and, and like he knew he knew what the Reds meant to me. And we used to have a go at each other and all that. And you know, any time he won the derby or whatever, I'd be straight in. I'd be giving him stick. And he come and fa- I didn't. I wasn't even having business studies that day. And he come and found me specifically to say, Ah, Kenny's gone. And I was like, shut up. And he went, Kenny's gone, Kenny's resigned. And I was like, no, he hasn't. And I didn't believe him. I never, got no mobile phones to check, mm. obviously. Uh, no way of knowing. And so I, I, like, I wasn't due to be going home on my dinner, but I went home on my dinner especially to find out whether it was true. And I remember it being on the one o'clock news, you know, the famous picture of Kenny sort of slumped at, at the press conference, all the cameras flashing away. And I just remember, you know, that, that, that front page of the Echo as well, Kenny quits. With, with that picture as well, and it, 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 I think Rob Gutman says on this show that it, you know, it felt like, almost felt like someone had passed away, and it, it mm. did feel like that. It was absolutely huge. You know, Kenny was such a huge figure in Liverpool's history and, and Liverpool at the time, and it was really hard to take. It was like, what? Kenny Dalglish has resigned. It was a yeah, it was a mad moment. I loved it. I loved everything you just said. Then I loved the way there's some people at home now going. What, you didn't have mobile phones? There was no what did internet. You, what did you do? I had <laughs> yeah. a conversation with my niece a few weeks ago where I mentioned there was no internet when I was a kid and she looked genuinely upset. She was like, what? Yeah, what, did what, what did you do? And well, literally people would like, it's in, this, it's in the documentary, which is brilliant, by the way, you should have a look if you haven't. Like, where people were like, I had to go home from work. Yeah. Like, I had, literally had to leave work. So when, when your boss is saying to you now, get off the internet, say to them, well, back in the olden days, people had to go home to watch the telly yeah, and listen to, to the radio and stuff like that. Yeah, so, you know, you're, you're better off. You're better off employers get, having people wasting the time on the internet. Um, anyway, watch the trailer that we're talking about. Uh, that's coming to you right now. And we'll be back in a minute with the papers. It felt like Kenny's magical effect over the club, I suppose like Shankly's before him, it seemed like it needed to go on forever, and yet it had to stop. Kenny's quit, I went, oh yeah, whatever, yeah. No, he has, and there's the front page, and I went, Jesus Christ, just hit me, you know. And I remember looking at that front page, and he looked a lost man. It's probably overstating it to say it felt like a death, but it, was, it did feel like an ending. I mean, Shankly said, the pressure eats away at you, this job eats away at you. If you love the club that much, it eats into you, into your soul. Okay, so that was the Kenny trailer, have a go with that. Uh, it's a good listen, we've had loads of good feedback on it. It's worth your time, really is. Uh, okay, in the newspapers today then, uh, just, just loads of stuff really about this type of thing. Uh, top gear, gear, see what they've done there. Uh, tough night, lads. United superstars toil in Spain. Um, the special one, De Gea saves United again as they shut out Sevilla. Uh, yeah, and, and, and all a variation of that really, in that basically their goalie yet again has bailed them out. Uh, they got a draw in Sevilla, Manchester United. Um, what, a, what I enjoyed this. I, I enjoy when there's been a big match and just sort of looking at conversations around it and seeing different viewpoints and not necessarily getting involved. And uh, I do follow a few Manx. Uh, just for the joy of it, really, just to see what they're saying. And, and some of them were holding this up as some kind of Mourinho masterclass, oh. basically saying, you know, that's what he set out to get. If you look at his history in Europe, it's always nils and ones away from home. This is what he does, this sort of thing. And I, 
My problem with that is you can. He is surely not legislating for De Gea pulling off world class save after world class save every time they play away from home, and yet that's what seems maybe to happen. He is. Maybe he, that's he maybe can't. that's his master plan. He can't. He can't be insane and like Carrington or whatever is going. All right, <laughs> mate. So listen, you're gonna have to have a boss game again. You're gonna have to pull off a few worldies and then we'll get it to all. I, I reckon you're wrong. I reckon that's what the whole training session is. It's just people smashing Booming balls into here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, did you watch the game? Did you see any of it? Yeah, I saw, I saw the, most of it. The, yeah. uh, the save, the save from like point blank from the others is, is unreal, isn't it? It's a, it's a crack and save. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think, I think he's been Player of the Year virtually every season, apart from the dodgy one he had. Um, and it looks likely that he will be again. Uh, I guess it emphasises a few things. I mean, the keeper at Roma has a good game as well. Yeah. Um, and that's got Allison, and that's got Liverpool fans talking yet again. I mean. Who are we giving credit to here? I'm giving credit to the keeper. I'm giving credit to the keeper and whoever bought him. I'm not giving credit to Mourinho for, for setting up for that. Yeah. He didn't set up for that. No, no, all joking aside, like it, it's funny. I saw some people on Twitter saying, um, it's funny how, and I, I've, I fall into this trap, like you're talking about Mourinho, he's been a great defensive coach and he's really solid and all that, but the reality is if you had any of our keepers in goal, they'd be, they'd be terrible. And you could, I think it's the, the most interesting bits about it, if, when you see the likes of Scholes and Ferdinand talking about it, and you can see just in the, not even in what they're saying, in their faces, they both know that once De Gea isn't there, it's going to, it's going to uncover so many cracks that he just covers up every week. But that's I've I've got theories all the time on footy lately, and one of my new ones is but like do, do when you play five a side, and in five a side it was always just about having one good lad who could score goals and a boss goalie. And if you didn't have either of them, and you played the team that had them, you'd get battered. Because yeah. if, if I went in goal or if one of my mates went in goal, the other team would have shots on the halfway line. They'd go in and he'd be like, oh, we've been trying dead hard to score. I think after all this, and this is gonna, this might ruin the Anfield rap at some point. So, so sorry about that. <laughs> but all we need to do now is buy one boss goalie. That's it. Forget. Let's forget all these debates about everything else. Just buy an amazing goalie, and and we'll and we'll win everything. So you're. We're good. Are you up for seventy million quid on Allison? I'd, I'd I'd pay every all the money we've got. I'd get everyone in the ground to empty their pockets. Go down <laughs> the back of their couches. Get John Henry in. See what he's got. I know he hasn't got much money, and people keep defending him about all this. But yeah, do you know if it? Well, we just paid seventy-five million. I've, something I've never understood actually is how the most expensive striker in the world is far more expensive than the most expensive keeper. We've just spent seventy-five million on a centre back, mm-hmm. and a goalie's well more important to us. And it's quite specialist as well, of isn't it? Of course, you know it I mean? is. There's, there's not loads of the great ones kicking around. No. I mean, I mean that's almost used at times, isn't it, to defend the keepers who got it? Like, well, look through the rest of the league and like who's who's amazingly better aside from De Gea yeah. and it's like well that's not really a defence though is it I mean why can't we go and get one of the amazing lads then yeah. like, like this Alisson does look a, a crack and keeper he makes a single gate saves last night although I did think it was quite funny then in a, in a you know in a weird way, if you like that, he makes all those great saves, and then and then the lad puts a free kick in the top bin, and he's just like, "Well, I can't reach that one." <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he did? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, and he just sort of he, he didn't really properly dive. It. it was a brilliant free kick, to be fair, but it was just sort of like, yeah. I mean, no matter how good they are, they still can see goals. <laughs> well, De Gea at one point it made me laugh to myself watching it one because De Gea just there was a shot from was it Muriel from the edge of the box, and it went about two yards wide, and De Gea just like left it, and and all the the commentators were like, he's brilliant, De Gea. The way you knew that was going wide, and I, I just thought to myself, lad, if you want if you want keepers, you'll just let things go past them. We've got a couple of them in our place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can have one of them. I mean, there's loads of uh, loads of sort of United in crisis type stuff, which as I've mentioned on here, I always enjoy. Uh, Pogba there in the mail being described as an 89 million pound problem. Uh, they've, had a, they've had a real pop out of me here and, and they, they've, they've detailed this week um, with Mourinho uh, on, on last Friday saying that a rift between the two was lies and bullshit. Uh, then Pogba ringing the club doctor on the Saturday saying he's unwell, uh, which is why he didn't play a Huddersfield. Um, you know, <laughs> also they ask, um, Pogba, did you paint these trainees yourself? I mean, I don't know what's going on with them. Can you see that, Sam? Really bad traps. I mean, you're getting all that money, mate, and you can't afford a decent pair of trainees. I mean, come on, what's going on there? Uh, am I sounding like your dad? I don't know. Yes. I might, I might be, but come on, they're shit. Has he painted them himself? I don't Is know. That was the question answered? Did you paint these trainers yourself? Um, they're a classic pair of Adidas originals with a twist. His initials PP in red brush strokes. We are like the our men now, though, aren't we? This oh, is God. this is it. This is where we're getting to. <laughs> Grumpy old man. Yeah. 
yeah, we'll, we'll be on Top thing. Gear next. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what else did we have? There, wa- there wasn't loads more in the papers. And, uh, we-, we did say on one of the shows earlier in the week that we'd answer some of your questions. Um, didn't get loads on YouTube, to be honest. We got some. Loads of them were weird. Uh, so I got some. Can I answer mine? Oh, you've had some in the past, yeah, haven't you? So, for, for the fans out there, yes, I do have a bit of a sore neck and, and we'll fix it. Uh, I do have a left arm. I know I didn't use it last week until the end. That was the big reveal last week. I might have more to come in the future. What was the other one? Oh, I don't shave me me my arm here above the t-shirt line. That's from the vi- the first video for these. Those are who genuine were questions. Attention. They were genuine questions. Someone asked as well. I mean, I'm often here having a cup of tea when we're doing these shows. Someone said, um, "How many sugars do you have?" Uh, none. Gave up sugar and tea uh, a long while back. They also said, "How long do you leave the uh, tea bag in for?" Uh, I leave the tea bag in until um, basically the colour of the brew is resembling He-Man's face. Uh, that's another reference there for the kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're alienating part of the fan base here, aren't we? And, and Robbo's also sponsored by Buffalo Bills. You Buffalo get paid Bills. a fortune for that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, they pay for my house. I mean, jo- John Henry uh, pays for the garden and uh, Buffalo Bills pay for the house. <laughs> um, but we did, we did ask for some questions about footy and stuff. We did a show on Monday, which has really divided opinion, which I'm actually quite happy about um, on reflection. I was a little bit worried earlier on in the week because we were getting lots of negativity about the show. But now, getting lots of support for it. It was nice to hear people forthright. It was nice to hear a bit of debate. Um, I'm, I'm with them on it. So the Question Time podcast on Monday, if you haven't listened, have a go with that. And stick with it as well, because it, a few people were like, I couldn't believe people were negative about Klopp at the start and I had to switch off. Well, if you stay with it, we didn't just talk about that. Um, there's been some really good shows on, on the Anfield app this week as well. It's been, you know, there's been no footy to talk about, but we'll, we'll always do something. Uh, we talked about whether um, supporters should own football clubs and whether that's a realistic proposition. Uh, we also had one of the lads in from, or a couple of lads in from the Spy and Cop 1906, talking about flags on the cop. That's a free show as well, so if you don't subscribe, you can have a go with that. And the shows just keep on coming. Um, there's more today as well. Uh, what have we got there today? The European show is out today. Uh, where Mo and uh, Paul Senior have an argument about whether Juventus are any good or not. Uh, there's a fantasy football show out there as well, and the Friday show. Uh, also, as well, uh, a few of the lads were at uh, Tranmere Rovers yesterday, watched Stephen Gerrard's under 19s beat Nicky Butts' Man United side 2 0. They got to speak to Stevie, they obviously watched the match as well, so they put a Central League show out there about that. So there's loads and loads of stuff on the Anfield app as ever to listen to. But yeah, we did ask for questions uh, for that question show and in general uh, there's still loads and loads that haven't been answered on this list um, so it feels like we should use some of them really um, so Kopi I'll, I'll throw one at you uh, let me I'm, see I'm not allowed to say anything negative now though am I? well you can say what you yeah. want mate do you know what I mean I'm alright with it um, a lot of these a lot of these were covered actually like psychology of fans and stuff like that um, Sean Gregory asked what did you make of Milan Barros's time at Liverpool FC I always liked Milan Barros did you? I like I like the spirit, but he annoyed me the way he always seemed to like. Like he had skill, he had ability, he could finish, but I thought he'd put his head down too much. So basically, like he'd get the ball, he'd put his head down, and he'd start beating players, and then he'd go on. And I come by the corner flag, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, and I, get, I, I get, And you just thought if you put your head up and went the other way, you, you'd probably be in there. But he just used to get his head down, run, yeah. take people on. It, it, I, th- I think. I'm at probably very basic level. I like players who just work dead hard and run around yeah. loads, and that's why I've, I've got like I've got an affinity with Danny Ings. Danny Ings is a bit of a modern day Milan Barros, possibly yeah, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, Maybe a little bit more aware of what's going on around him. No, but I like I like Barros. He, at the end of the day, he was part of a team that won the European Cup. So I love all those lads. Uh, what else have we got? We, we, we talked at length on the show about Klopp, uh, so we're not going to do that again. Yeah, just while you're looking for more questions, just to be clear, I actually like Jurgen Klopp. This, this might have been lost in. Um, in translation from the from the show on Monday, we were asked about how well we think he'd done so far. If he got just to be clear, if he goes on to win the European Cup, I'll love him as much as all the uh, evangelists out there. This is one, and this is interesting. We talked a little bit on on Monday about sort of mentality of fans and why there's like a doom and gloom as soon as we lose one game, and and you get people talking about typical Liverpool, even though the typical Liverpool of the season is one that wins games and scores lots of goals. Uh, this is another one that comes up quite a lot. Um, Cy Ashton asked this one on Twitter. 
He said, can you talk about the relationship between Liverpool and the media and how we get a really hard time? Now, I wonder on this one, and I've done no investigation, but do we, or just, or does every set of fans say this? I reckon if you asked every set of fans, they'd say the same thing. Yeah. In the same way that every set of fans think their team can't take corners, can't defend corners, doesn't, doesn't sign the right players, doesn't, their, their ownership isn't good enough. I think it's just, I think it's just a footy thing. Yeah. And we, we, all, we all see what we want to see, and we're all in our own little bubbles as well, so... I often talk this about the goalkeeper point's a really good one, is that the only way you can judge someone else's goalie is if you watch him every week and mm. analyse him in the same way we analyse everything that Mignolet does and everything that Carrius does. You can watch Alisson. I can get you footage of Mignolet and Carrius pulling off amazing saves to put on, on loop for a three-second video on Twitter, and it looks brilliant. But that doesn't mean he's a brilliant keeper. It, and that's, that's the problem with signing other players. I, I've got this theory that, like, it's just a general... It, this isn't a theory, this is true. This, this, it's just a general rule of football that we all think our own players... We underrate our own players and overrate everybody else's. Yeah. And it's because it's the same thing. We're, we're looking out all the time. Like, I saw people saying about the whole Firmino thing, bringing it back around, that you know, it's a conspiracy and the FA, would, the FA were gutted that they couldn't do him for it and all this and that. I just think that's it's just footy, isn't it? Like, you know, ask United fans, ask City fans. It's a what I will say though is that you know before before I took the plunge and went full time on on doing this Anfield rap and that, and it is a real job. Um, I was working a, my last job was full time was at the Mirror online working for their uh, working for their website, and, and they had a program there called Chartbeat, which literally put on a, on a tally in front of you as you were working. You could see what stories were doing well on the website, and you know you obviously tried to get to the top and that sort of thing. And every morning, there's, it still happens now. You know the lads will go in and they'll write about Liverpool, Manchester United, and Arsenal on purpose as soon as they can, as soon as they get in. Why? Because they're the fans that are online looking for looking for that information, and those articles by default will do well. If you're talking about Liverpool, people will click things that are about Liverpool, and so there is a little bit of that as well. And so when people feel like they're getting a hard time, I think some things in some quarters are written to basically wind Liverpool fans up. And, to, and but but I think that happens to Manchester United as well. I mean, you know, some of that stuff there that we just talked about in the mail, while we can have a good laugh about it. There'll be United fans going, but hang on, he done this and he done this and he done this, and they haven't discussed that. And there is a little bit of that. That you do, you know, there is a section of the media that like to do this and get you get you going. And you know, that's just a fact. It's a really, like. it's a really good point. And I think I think loads of people don't. Maybe maybe everyone knows this deep down and we forget about it. But the reality is, this it's all about getting you to talk about stuff and getting you to click on things and share things and all that. And the reality is, loads of negative stuff actually does a better job of that than yeah. positive stuff so if you find yourself retweeting or commenting on negative things about Liverpool and then complaining that it exists you're part of the problem do you know what I mean I, I remember, this is a mad example to give but I remember when I was a kid I used to wind my sister up all the time got a big sister and one day my mum went and said to her just ignore him and he'll go away and the next time I did something she ignored me and I was like ah, I'll, I'll do it again and then, yeah. and then I did it again she ignored me again I was like it's boring now I'm just stopped <laughs> Just stop. You don't, some of them, some of them don't stop though. I mean, like this, that advice. I've had that advice given to me so many times. I'm 41 now, and people are still giving me that advice. And yet, and yet, you know, there's certain people, certainly on the internet, where like every time you turn your Twitter on, they're there, and they're just, it's just like they're going. It's like water torture, and then one day you just go, <laughs> oh fuck off, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't help it. There was a, there was, there was a fella doing it to me last night. I am mate, you know who you are, and, and it's like ever since we've done the Anfield app. I only ever hear from him when, he, when he's got a problem with it, when, he's got, when he wants to point out something I've done wrong. And he says to me that, um, because I was arguing with people over Holgate Firmino last night, he says, the next time that I have an opinion on something uh, where I don't know everything about it, uh, he's going to point it out to me every time I do it. And, and how will I feel if I do that? Well, I'll tell you how I feel, mate. I'll just block you, because I haven't got enough headspace for you. Basically, so I, I, I reckon you should go the other way. Go on the offensive. Do it back. Yeah, do it back. <laughs> just find out everything you can and just keep going at him whenever he tweets it, anything. It just ends up like dominating my life. I want to go and like you know well, walk the dog. To do. I want to walk the dog. You've got nothing else to do. <laughs> that, this is, I know this I is see a, me kids. turning into a theme. Would you just do it during the day when you're not doing any work? <laughs> Is that what he's saying to you? Is he I, just I constantly saying, I've heard you haven't got a proper job? He's just starting to get in my head. Is he your dad? <laughs> yeah, it's my dad, isn't it? Dad, just put the mug guards on, lad. You <laughs> know what I mean? Right, OK, we're being mad now, aren't we? Uh, that's been Talking Reds. Um, there'll probably be a, a, a scene of Talking Reds tomorrow, but, you know, don't bank on it.